Hello, world. Patricia O'Connor and Frida Riva Dorsey here. Uh, wait, 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 wait. I'll just do a, do a sloppy little pan there and show. Yeah, there she is. Frida Riva Dorsey. Yeah, we'll go back into frame. Now, to the eight people who saw the last video, um, and to the three beautiful people who uh, gave the thumbs up to the last video uh, before I deleted it, we I had a uh, it, I had a little mishap on that one. You know, there's a certain amount of quality control here. While on one hand, we're not act exactly killing it in the uh, cinematography uh, direction. N you know, nor do we try to. We're a little run and gun. You don't see any editing. You don't see a lot of cameras. You don't see a lot of camera setups. You don't see a lot, any switching or any cutting. We just basically turn it on and do our bit. That's that's what we do when we try to, we try to put them out and crank them out. But on the other hand, um, in the, if we do something and it doesn't come out, to even our to even those standards that it's going to compromise the information, then I'll delete it. And while I'm on that topic, if ever I come across something that I've done on a previous video and go, yeah, but that was what based on what we thought then, and now we don't, then I will go back and say, uh, I will go back and say, so I will go back and say if something that I ever said has changed or if something that I ever said was wrong or if I found out otherwise or something like that. Um, we do uh, have a certain amount of, uh, a certain amount of decorum on, on what we what we figure will fly and what, and what we want. For instance, the information that I pass along is information that I've obtained, um, basically learning my lessons from the several uh, pros whose programs I subscribe to and or I mention my sources like I'll say you know I was watching Bonds IQ or I was watching Kimmy Bonsai or something like that so I, I think those are not only are those trusted sources but I almost always tell you the source unless I think um unless I think that's kind of like unless it, it comes off like name dropping and then I'll just you know you just know that I learned that from one of from uh, Bonsai Mariah or something like that. Um, and to that end, the last video was uh, 30 minutes uh, of pure potential, but uh, is what a potential meaning it could have been, it could have been some really great, some, some not really great, but some really good substance. And instead what it was, was 27 minutes of out of frame. I honestly, between you and me, I hit on and zoom at the same time. And while the opening shot pretty well showed uh, showed a tree in the center of frame, and no, I didn't notice that it looked larger than normal. As soon as I started doing stuff, uh, everything was like up here, which was now out of frame because um, because the fr uh, camera had zoomed in. And while I was looking at it on my phone before I before I uh, uploaded it. I didn't look at it for long enough to see past that intro and we didn't we really didn't know that we had done something that bad until we saw it. And then once I saw it I'm like, yeah, this can't fly so. So here we are. But I already had planned to do another uh video tonight and here it is. And what we have here is three pines. And uh one of them uh to start off with, I am going to uh repot and for no uh for a pretty good reason i think this little guy right here it looks really good to my way of thinking it's got a really good color um but right now we're starting to see rain again like quite a bit of rain again and this is the only one left that is in a uh that's in a cardboard milk carton all right, it's in a wax covered, co covered, a uh, yeah, wax covered milk carton, and it's cardboard. And I don't think it's gonna last that long. Also, it's a little overpotted, and that substrate 
not only does it stay wet too long, you can see the tree behind it and the tree behind it. Uh, I don't know how well you can tell it, but they're both drier than this one because this little tree has got a hard row to hold to try to dry up all of that substrate. And that pot staying sopping wet. is staying soppier and wettier longer because of that. So the simple idea here is it's going into here. I've already got it like two thirds of the way full. And uh, we're just going to, uh, I th what I was thinking I would do is, is cut the bottom out of this and see how that gets this. Like, like yo. And uh, if we do that, and it's, you know, it's Saturday night, so uh, we've kicked the camera already. Official Saturday night. But see, I also have a couple of more uh, little pines behind us. That's working really well, Pat. But I have an, a, a couple of more pines behind us that I'm thinking that... Uh, we need to have a look at and see how they're doing. See if we need to do anything to them. Now, I am still using a couple more of these little uh, milk cartons for like two other trees, but they are planted in uh, containers that are standing above. They're in plastic containers that aren't going anywhere. And beneath them, I've got them kind of sewn down to that as as my little as a little root trick that I do but uh you yeah, know we're, we're muddling through it's just kind of how we do it there we go we should be here we go now, you may have noticed, like, not your good scissors. Well, no, those are my stainless scissors. Those are the ones that, uh, if I'm gonna cut wet rocks with, it would be those. Not my blue steel scissors. Um, don't need that. Do sort of need that. Bring this out of here. So, yeah, about the doves. I did the video a couple of days, or yeah, a couple of days ago where I was showing where I had these, these little doves hanging out. They were precious. Well, about the time they started trying to make their little presence known again, Um, a crow showed up and I'm always I'm always feeding the crows peanuts and sometimes the ducks although you didn't hear that from me because I'm not supposed to feed the crows and the ducks but the, the doves were up there in the lights milling around like they were doing and I was just sitting there wondering, why wouldn't they go at the part that I thought would be better for them? And about that time, um, a crow landed on the rail, which they know I live here, but they never come up to me or approach me unless I'm outside. And unless I have that a little purse I have with the peanuts in it, they know what the purse looks like. And so whenever, whenever they see that and they see me, they come around and start acting all handsome and stuff and hanging out really close and being real loud and stuff and making sure I see them. And, and you know, I usually talk to them and, and then I'll leave some some peanuts on, on the little handrail or something um, where they can see. And then I'll walk away from it and let them have at it. I'm not trying to get them to get close to me or nothing. They can have, you know, but they know, but they know who I am. And they know where I live. So when they saw the doves up there hanging out on top of the lights, they flew down onto my rail, which they almost never do, and were looking at me like, you know, they were looking at me like, what the hell is this? 
and all I did was say, hey there, like I, you know, like I normally do, like a really high uplifting voice, hey there, hey there, and um, the crow ran the doves off, like, y'all, y'all don't belong here, y'all need to hit the road, and that was that, um, problem solved. And it was, it was, I didn't want to necessarily take that on. I was worried. I was worried about uh, their exposure to uh, electricity. Not that they would have get, gotten shocked, but if you're laying up against something that's got 740 watts, I don't know if that's going to give you cancer or not. You know, I don't, I don't think using a, a a high intensity light as a bed, even if it even if it feels kind of warm and comfy, it's necessarily a good idea. So that was one thing I was concerned about. I was also concerned about them shorting out the light. So, uh, but I felt like I could have covered that easy enough. Um, but apparently, the uh, crows, which are really really smart, looked at that. And it kind of reminds me of the Ren and Stimpy bit when I used to when I used to think that guy was okay. Where you go, where uh, Ren looks at somebody, Ren looks at somebody talking to Stimpy and goes, "Hey, get away from the idiot! He's mine." So that was pretty much. They're like, "Yeah, this this is my mark. You guys keep, you guys keep going." All right. That's better. I think that little tree is going to be happier in that. I don't have to worry about it staying quite as soggy. This little, uh, this little smaller pot was, I mean, it's actually, it's got more substrate in it now, but at least that will drain, that will drain and flow and go down and stuff. This whole little thing was staying flat and soggy and it wasn't draining well. And, uh, I was afraid that the, 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 uh, cardboard pot was actually melting so i think that's a little better that's a little good place for that guy to hop to and we'll consider that a water in and then it will be done so that's got us that's got us there um also i brought in these guys but i was out there trumping around in the dark so, what happened with these guys? They um, are one of, this is two of the 10 that I ordered. I ordered two sets of 10. And one set of 10 came, 10 trees, came from uh, Florida. And their 10 turned out to be uh, nine. And of that nine, I ended up with six. And of those six, they were they were the tiny tiny ones, like the like the ones we just messed with, like the one we just did. That, that was one of the six. And as you saw, those were a lot smaller than the one you're looking at now. This was like a year old seedling, and the others were like this big. So I went to town crazy and just folded up those tiny little things like balloon animals. And uh, out of the out of the six out of the seven that I ended up with, I folded I folded probably folded one to death, and ended up with six that looked pretty good. Um, and these trees, the uh, one, they came from Seattle. Two, they uh, sent ten out of ten trees that I ordered, which was good. Their their uh, ability to count to ten already. Uh, shows them to be a little more on the ball there. And, you know, I don't know. The county agent, before it crossed the line, may have taken one of those trees, for all I know. I can't really put that off on anybody. Uh, and I did get good use out of those trees, so I'm not really complaining. And Florida got hit with a hurricane right after that. So I keep saying I'm, um, I keep saying I'm over it, but I, you keep seeing me not being over it. But... Basically, I am, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to bring it up. All right. We got a lot of... Mo now, these... not That's no reflection on these guys. These guys came more healthy than they would ever be again. They have a really good color to them now. But um, they came just really looking spry when I got when I got them. 
and they're still looking good. We I put uh, a double strand of wire to this guy and folded it up like, uh, oh, I just folded it into a knot. I mean, you can just see there all that going on. And it's not too badly scarred. I think we got away with it. Uh, I'm thinking that'll be, that might be pretty interesting once we, uh, once we get a little thickness to that, it might be at some other point. We'll squeeze that up a little in some other ways or, or turn something around. Um, I'll probably let those candles that you're looking at go and let this whole thing fatten up a little more. I'm not worried about whether this bites in or not. It's going to be hell to get that wire off the way it's already starting to bite in for as long as I'm planning on leaving it. But, um, hell it will be because one, I'm going to leave it on there for quite some time. And two, I'm not going to leave it on there and let it disappear into a tree. Uh, I had somebody asking me about that the other day. Um, asking me if, if I leave, you know, how long I leave wire in the pines. And to me, the idea is is um, some trees you don't want to leave wire in because that scarring takes too long to get rid of. And it is kind of like what you do when you don't know what you're doing. And on other, and about the time you start learning to look for that, then you start seeing examples of where people uh, allow that to happen and make use of it. So it's kind of like um, when you restrict something and a hose swells up on either side of it, and then once you let go of it, the place, it swells up really large on either side of the restriction. And then once you let go of it, the part where it was restricted tends to catch up rather quickly. Uh, the other idea behind that is uh, if you do that to a pine tree that doesn't have bark on it yet, the wire marks that you may encounter or that may stay in there will or should be covered at some point by uh, by the bark on the tree. So that is uh, true. However, if you do not remove the wire, it would just grow up and grow up and, and grow thicker and grow around all that. And you would, and at some point, the wire is embedded in there. And when the tree starts to make bark, you will see a line in the bark where the bark formed and raised up through the wire, wherever you left it on there. It almost looks like whenever you see a roast in a butcher shop or something and it has those strings tied tightly around it, except pretend you see the, the restraint of those strings, but you don't see the strings anymore. That's kind of what it's like. And once you know what that looks like, then you go, yeah, there's a wire buried in there. And you'll always see that on a tree that's done that way. So one of my trees is done that way. And um, that was a mistake I didn't have to make when I got it. And then I, I did a, a chop on part of it um, to cut it down and to get some shape to it. I could see where it had uh, three different wires buried close to the center of the tree. And as those wires were spiraling around the limb and the limb grew through those wires, they would from inside to out, uh, all, all the way, you know, no matter how deep that bark gets, no matter how deep that plate gets, it'll always show that trenching where it has come through that um, looks like aluminum wire. So yeah, that's that's about that. Now other trees, maybe you uh, don't want to do that. My literatis, I'm uh, going to try to keep from scarring them. I don't want them to uh, overly fatten necessarily. Uh, also notice on this guy, we've we are learning to use the plugs. These trees, both sets of ten came unpotted they were in these plugs and they were healthy happy and really good plugs so i planted all of them with a little plug exposed 
some more than others, some with the whole plug exposed. The idea there being is that as that plug wears out, all of those roots will be exposed roots and we'll be able to um, make cool trunk-like shapes and or circus animal type shapes out of those out of those roots. So um, we're going to cut quite a few of those uh, candles, but I'm not going to do it, but I'm not going to do it right now. I don't really see no need to do it right now. The longest one can be the longest one, and at some point we'll, we'll cut the rest of them. But, uh, oh, what the heck, we'll just go ahead and do it now. You talked yourself into it. I could also, uh, I could also pull these off with tweezers. You just kind of grab them down low underneath and uh, try to like snap them off, like grab them low underneath and then kind of give the tweezers one of those. And they'll usually, they'll usually pop right off, except between you and me, I think if I, tr whenever I try to do stuff like that on camera, I usually like something spaz happens, I flip a tree out of the pot or something, you know, something that would have never normally happened, but um, the joys of video. Uh, good. All right. Now that little that little candle there can um, can just shoot the moon. Pal, zoom to the moon, Alice. All right. Now that brings us to this little guy. Uh, same kind of deal. We have got some pretzel logic going here. Uh, let's see. Is the slide issue? Is the slide issue? I don't. I think this guy, maybe it'll be pretty. It almost, you know, no, that's, that's, that's cool. That's okay. Here's, here's the issue as I see it. Not a bad issue, but this trunk and this, yeah, this tree is going to fatten up and be interesting. And this candle is going to help that. But I don't really have a lot going on right now in the way of buds. Everything's top heavy. And this is looking like it's trying to be one straight candle. I should probably hook a wire into here and start, and start incorporating this into our tree. Or looking down here for something that's going to be the tree when all of this gets cut off because right now it's looking like that's all one candle isn't it isn't it didn't it maybe uh a bud site here a bud site up here and probably quite a few that are on the wrong side or on the back side of some of my... This tree has got one of those, you can kind of see in here, I've got these curly cues going. I call those my Cheerios. This is also uh, almost May. Yeah, I should be from this point on, we should be pulling the fertilizer from our, uh, from most of our Japanese black pines. Um, those that are going to be, those that are going to be decandled in June will need to have gotten their last dose of fertilizer in uh, May. So this is about the time that uh, if I've got little chunks of bio gold laying on the top they can probably hang out for a little while longer but i won't be adding any more and then probably in the next two weeks i should make sure that everything is picked up in the way of that if they're going to be if they're if by the end of june i'm going to cut the candles and then i'm going to want them to um have run all of their uh nutrients through them by that point 
so that whenever it comes time for them to make another uh, a second flush of needles, they won't have excess energy on hand, i.e. because I will have stopped feeding them 30 days prior to uh, cutting the needles. And that's kind of how we... That's kind of how we do that timing. So uh, this being this being like the first week of May, I can probably do my bio gold for another maybe two weeks, three three at the max, and then after that, it all needs to be picked up because for me, everything is gonna is going to go with shorter needles. If I had if I had a large, large, large you know empire sized Japanese black pine then maybe I would decandle that guy in, um, maybe I would decandle, uh, that tree towards, uh, the second week of June or maybe the first week of June. But if you want the, uh, if you want the needles to be small, then you want to cut the candles at the latest possible time when they've grown the most at the, at the end of that window. That way, when you cut those candles, the needles, the second round, will not have as long of a season to extend out. And since you will have already stopped feeding it, there won't be enough resources tapped, you know, on tap in excess to make an excessively long needle. And that's how, and um, by cutting our candles, that's how we shorten our needles. And that's also how we can uh, achieve back buds but we can also achieve back buds by just the opposite by feeding our trees and by you know taking good care of them and stuff but the main thing about but the main thing about um candle pruning is a lot of times it's it's to dictate the size of the needles and the fuller mass and all that kind of and all that kind of good stuff so that's kind of what's going on there i would like to see some of these buds get going uh maybe i'll clean this Maybe I'll clean this back some and then uh, do something with these buds back here after cleaning the trunk. But at some point, uh, I can't let this guy just be totally top heavy because a lot of that's candle. And um, I don't want to be left with, I don't want to be left with uh, a nicely shaped wild trunk that's gotten fat and stuff, but then all the growth is on the top, and that's my candle, which I and that's my uh sacrifice branch. So that wouldn't do me, that wouldn't do me, do me. Otherwise, this is a good little container for this. This tree has good motion. We uh minded our P's and Q's on here, it's kind of hard to see, but this guy comes out of the ground at a good little angle. We, uh, basically what I do to get that, uh, that, that kind of a shape, like what you see here is, um, when the tree comes out of the ground, I run the wire this way into the soil. And then I wrap the wire around the tree. And then once I've got a tight spiral around it, I'll lay this beside the tree and I'll wrap the tree around this stainless steel chopstick as if the tree were a wire. And then with those tight Cheerios, as I call them, you can see them there. Uh, you know, that's basically a spring, right? Well, that wouldn't look good by itself. But when you start with that, then you can take those springs and bend those little coils in different directions back and forth and fold it over on itself. And I think we've gotten some interesting results out of that. I also think the answer to this might be just simply to hook another wire in and continue this run right on up a little while longer. Um, that, might be, that might be a good project for tomorrow is to uh, we'll do a wire hook. And by wire hook, I mean I'll run another wire and attach it to this last run that stops here. And then I'll continue, I'll continue the wire on up. We are 29 minutes in here. We're gonna, we're gonna call this enough. Uh, this will be our Sunday program. This tree has got a lot of good motion in it. I really like what we did to start 
I have kind of been hanging back because I haven't really known what to do there. But in looking at it, this is going to come out. This is going to come out pretty cool. Also, uh, this is another one of those where we really got away with all of the bending and folding. There's not a lot of scarring to be seen on this tree, and um, and we did a lot of folding. There's a lot of heavy bending work in there. It'll be interesting to see how that comes out with you know with everything else that we're doing. It'll be interesting to see what uh, what a year does to this guy. All right. I wanted to get back on the horse really quickly. I, I um, dropped the video that I wasn't happy with earlier tonight, and that happens. I haven't had to do that a couple of times uh, in the last couple of years. But uh, if we see something that that isn't up to uh, even our standards, then we'll then we'll burn it. And that's kind of what we did with that's kind of what we did with the video that we made earlier tonight. Um, and, and that video had a lot of potential. I, um, I potted up, I, I potted up our $50, uh, challenge tree and, uh, re, uh, rewired that tree. So the next time, the next time we go out on the patio, I will show you, uh, the, uh, $50 challenge Japanese black pine that I threw some more wire to tonight. And I shot a video of that. It too was about this long. And unbeknownst to me, when I hit play, I also hit zoom. So it was a 30 minute video, 27 minutes of which was me talking about a tree like this. And uh, I didn't pick the tree up for the first three minutes. So I looked at it on the phone for three minutes before downloading it and then thought we were good to go and then and then did all that. Sorry, that happens. If you saw that video, you are a trooper and I owe you sushi or something. I, I don't know. Just come tap me on the shoulder and tell me that you lived through that and um, and I'll, I'll make good somehow. Anyway, like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. Our next drop will be tomorrow. We, we will be doing this guy if nothing else and uh and yeah yeah thank you so much for watching